And I'm here with current Toledo men's basketball player, JT Shoemate. JT, great to get you on the show today, my friend. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for taking some time to obviously answer some questions and just share your story a little bit. I know it's probably been very busy over the last few weeks and as we gear up for the holidays as well. How have the first few weeks of the season been for you and your team? Um, they've been good. Um, I, I think the, the next step for us is just consistency. Um, we, you know, we dropped a couple games. We just didn't really didn't really play too well. We also won a couple of really close ones, especially in the Bahamas that I feel like brought us close together. So it's been good so far. Now, early on, what are some things that you've noticed from this team that have been big improvements from last year's team? Um, rebounding, probably first and foremost from last year's team. Um, I feel like we're, we're really together as a unit, which uh, we were last year, but, but this team really stays together and competes when, when things get hard, which I like. Now, do you think that kind of the – added bonus of having a little bit of a, I would say a, a looser off season, being able to be around the guys as opposed to the previous off season. Did that have anything to do with kind of the chemistry for this year's team? Oh, definitely. It was easier to hang out and, and do things like that, which helps a lot. Um, I think that we, we had some guys come in that were, were new and it's just like, it kind of fell right into place. Like nobody really, nobody really felt out of sorts, which is nice. Well, that's great, man. That's really, really good. Well, it sounds like a good start to the season. I want to get into your career a little bit. You've got a really interesting journey as you actually started out at a, a Division II school at Walsh University. What made you initially steer into that direction to go to Walsh? Um, I went to Walsh because when I uh, took a visit there, I really liked the uh, players and the coach. Um, I didn't have any Division I scholarship offers out of high school, so – uh, I really felt like it was the best option for me. It was between there and West Lib. Those are the two schools I was looking at, um, Walsh and West Liberty. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any division one offers. So I just, I feel like they were the best place that I could go and succeed at that time. And they were offering me a full ride to play there. Now, I know that you come from a big basketball family. I know your sisters play at the collegiate level, your dad being a coach as well. How much have they kind of helped you and how much did they help you get to the collegiate level? And how much did they push you to get to that level as well? Oh, I, my dad was a huge part of um, all of us uh, coming up, playing basketball and, and getting to play at this level. Uh, you know, just countless shots that he, he rebounded. Um, he, him being a coach, you know, he always had something to say. To me after a game I feel like that's really helped me too throughout my career to like make corrections to my game and um you know he taught me how to play and then my sisters um are obviously better than me which is fine it's cool but uh I have one sister who plays at Kent State and another one who just transferred into Ohio State uh, from West Virginia so she's gonna be playing there now that's so. very cool man that's great. Well, I mean, it's nice that everybody is, you know, somewhat close to each other, right? I mean, do you get to go see them play at all ever or have you yet? Yeah, I've seen Katie play a couple of times at Kent State. Um, Emma hasn't played it anywhere yet in college, obviously, but I used to make an easy trip back and watch her play in high school. Very cool. Very Actually, cool. this now past year, she played in um, uh, the state championship game, which I was able to see because our season had just ended. Uh, they lost in the state championship on a uh, buzzer beater or no they lost by uh two points they could have won on a three buzzer beater in double overtime but they they missed the three wow oh uh, my that gosh close. yeah that's the epitome of close i mean that had to have been heartbreaking for her how how brutal was that it was awful they were all they were all balling uh it was tough to watch for sure but they 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 fought really hard and and lost to a really good team who's won like three out of the last five state championships or something. So it's just, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, Hey, you know what? They went up against tough competition. And if you go to double overtime down the wire, can't really be, I would say that mad. obviously you want to win, but I mean, there's a lot of bright spots from that. Now during your, right before you went to Walsh, you actually were, you were offered a walk on spot at Ohio. You, you turned it down. I want to kind of hear from you. Was that a hard decision for you? I mean, how hard was that for you to kind of, turn away at that point the only opportunity that really kind of arose for you to play at the division one level uh, it was kind of tough because I had always seen myself playing at the division one level so if there was any opportunity for me to do that I, I was I wanted to do it but it actually came down to a phone call 
that I uh, had with uh, Jordan Dardis, who who played at Newark, uh, where I went to high school. He was a senior when I was a freshman. And so he was at OU at the time. Um, it was going to be his senior year there. I called him. I'm like, what, what kind of opportunities would I would I get, you know, with a walk on spot at OU? And he's like, no, man, you I mean, it's possible that you could could uh, walk on and end up getting a scholarship here, but you should go where you're wanted. And that's what I did. Well, smart move on your part. I mean, you had a really, really good career at Walsh prior to having a great career that you have right now at Toledo. You guys actually went to the NCAA tournament while you were at Walsh. At what point during that year that you guys made that run, did you kind of feel set off that run? I mean, was there a particular game or a particular instance, moment, or a practice, a team speech? Was there something that kind of ignited that run to the NCAA tournament for you guys? Um, not not really. We were just, I feel like we had a really skilled team. Um, we had, we had a couple of guards who just like didn't miss from three. It seemed like, and we had a, a, a big guy who was a division one athlete, but he just, he wasn't, um, very skilled. And he actually had like 12 blocks in the game that sent us to the, um, NCAA tournament. He, he had 12 blocks against Finley to send us there my freshman year. Um, we were on our way to the tournament again, my uh, sophomore year when everything got shut down, but yeah, we, we were just, it was a good team that we had over there for sure. Now talk a little bit about that. I mean, that had to have been pretty hard for you guys hearing that, Hey, we're going to the tournament and then COVID kind of comes crashing down. I mean, what was the ambiance around the team when you guys heard that? <laughs> It was actually just a bunch of uh, a bunch of hand sanitizer being spread around on a, on a bus. You know, we were we were on our way there though, so we're like we're thinking we're still gonna play the game. We're just gonna be safe and everything. So we get like halfway to Indy. We're playing in Indianapolis, and uh, they tell us we're at a Wendy's, and they told us that it was canceled. Like everything was canceled. Like that's when Duke and Kentucky started shutting theirs down. Um, we already knew that they were shutting theirs down when the bus ride started. So we were kind of like, oh, I don't know. But then halfway through, shut shut down the D2 tournament too. What was that bus ride like on the way back? It was so weird because you, you usually lose a game and that ends your season. Like every, everybody ends on a loss unless you win the national championship. But a lot of people ended on a win. And you just, we came back and we're just like, we're in a team meeting and I'm just looking around and everybody's like, kind of like our season's over now. Like we just go, just go back to doing class and that's it. It was just, it was not cool. Yeah, definitely not a, a an enjoyable uh, period of time. If you will, I'm sure that had been really difficult, but then you wind up making the decision to transfer over to Toledo where you're at now. And I want to hear from you. What made you decide to transfer and what made you want to go to Toledo? Um, you know, like I said, I just always saw myself playing at the Division One level, so that's that was a big part of my decision to transfer. Um, and then uh, Toledo was just kind of the obvious choice for me. Like they, it was the best Division One offer that I had out of Walsh, probably as far as like um, their history of being good and winning games. And then uh, Coach Kowalczyk uh, FaceTime me, showed me the facilities because I couldn't because of COVID, I couldn't go see them in person. But he FaceTimed me, showed me everything, um, offered me a scholarship. I called him back a couple minutes later and accepted it. So did you get offered a scholarship over FaceTime? Um, no, I think he, he, he FaceTimed me like a couple of days and a couple of days before he offered me and showed me everything around. But he did offer me on the phone a couple of days later. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it was, it was an obvious choice. I called him back a minute later. Yeah. That had to been really, I mean, what's that process like the transfer process in the midst of the pandemic? I mean, that had to have been very weird. I know the transfer portal has been a really big thing over the last year or so with all the players that have been going through it. So for you, I mean, what was your experience dealing with it, but then also like with the pandemic on top of it? Yeah, I, I'd say it was just a bunch of awkward Twitter DMs. That was, that was pretty much my experience. Um, but, it, I mean, you, you just kind of had to take a leap of faith because you're not going to – like, I didn't get to meet any of the players. Uh, I didn't get to meet any of the coaches in person. So it was just like 
you know, I think this place is really going to work. And then you just kind of got to go for it. And that's what everybody did, I guess, with, with COVID recruiting. Now, when you made that jump from D2 to D1, I got to hear from you. What's that adjustment like? I mean, what, what was that a hard adjustment for you? Was it a couple weeks until you could get really acclimated or was it pretty right from the start? You felt pretty good about it. Um, I'd say, I mean, it was just kind of like progressing as the season went on because it was, it's definitely a big adjustment as far as um, the length and athleticism uh, uh, in the game. And it goes a little bit faster. I'd say, but I mean, I always tell people like the skill level is not different. Like it's, it's very comparable, but the athleticism and the length, is just what you have to get used to. I, I think the, the game where I really was like looking around and I was like, geez, this is like, this is going fast was the Akron game. Our first Akron game at Akron. And I didn't play very well. I, I just felt like I was watching the game, like go, like go by me. And that's when I, I realized I'm like, like I can, I can play at this level, but I just gotta, I just gotta play. Like, cause it, cause I wasn't, I wasn't playing that game. I was, I was watching. So now, yeah. did you have any uh, practices when you first arrived where you had a teammate that kind of quote unquote welcomed you to division one basketball? Was there like a big block or like a big steal? I mean, I know everybody's got that one instance during practice. A teammate kind of just is like, you know, Hey rookie, welcome to the league or kind of thing. You know, did that kind of happen with you where you were like, Hey, welcome to division one basketball. It, it could have been a very bad moment. I'll say that because uh, Seth Milner, who came in with me, um, he uh, he tried to dunk on me our first open gym. Like I, he missed it, but like I didn't block it. Like he, he just missed it. And I was not expecting it at all. Like he came down the paint, jumped from what seemed like really far away. And yeah, that would have been a that would have been a rude welcome. If it would have, uh, if it would have went in, but I was happy that he missed. Yeah, that would have been, uh, I don't know what that locker room environment would be like after, you know, how do you like interact with someone that's on your team that you just dunked on? You know, I don't know how you would go about interacting with them. Depends on the guy. Some guys, some, some guys are going to be, are going to be more, uh, more abrasive about it than others, I guess. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. That's a good way of putting it. Now I do want to ask you're now in playing division one basketball, you know, coming from where you were a couple of years ago, all the way to now, I'm sure, you know, life has been very different for you. Do you ever stop and kind of realize and look back and say, Whoa, like where, how did I get to this point? Like, what has it been like? You know, I mean, do you ever stop and kind of take a moment to realize where you've come from? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it happens, happens quite a lot. Actually, a, a big one this year was, was playing at Michigan state. Um, I just, you know, when I was in high school and I, I didn't have any D1 offered, I was never thinking that I'd be playing in an arena like that. Um, and then we go to Richmond and that, that arena might, might've been nicer. And it's just like, I don't know. I just, yeah, I do. I do look back and, and think about, you know, what, what all got me here. And, and it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's been a wild ride, my friend. I mean, is there any certain instance or, any certain moment that kind of stands out during your journey where you're like, that was almost a big crossroad that really swung you into the direction in which you're in right now. Yeah, I guess, um, I guess going to Walsh because I, I, I really ended up fitting in there well. And maybe if I went to a, a different division two school, you know, my numbers wouldn't have looked as nice to a D one coach and, and TK wouldn't have offered me or something. So, you know, there's a lot of things could have happened where I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't have um, shot up to six, six, my junior year, I'm, I, you know, I might be playing D three right now. So it's like, <laughs> you never know, but um, yeah, a, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of things happen to make, to make one outcome. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it always takes, you know, one thing to kind of kick things into motion. It's a domino effect. Now that growth spurt had to have been pretty painful, right? I mean, how bad your knees hurt during that? Yeah, it was tough. I, there were a lot of nights that uh, my sleep was interrupted with with growing pains, but yeah, definitely worth it. Yeah, I always wish I was one of those players that had a massive growth spurt. I I, I peaked at like seventh grade. All of a sudden, <laughs> I just shot up to like five eight, and then that was it. That just capped me at that. But that's okay. It is what it is. Anyways, my yeah. friend, I appreciate you for coming on the show today, big time. Before I let you go, I got one final question. It kind of involves 
an epiphany or kind of an aha moment for you as to when you really realized that you could play college basketball at the division one level. So at what point, what game, what instance, I mean, what kind of allowed you or uh, gave you that kind of aha moment, if you will, that you could really do this? Well, I mean, I, first of all, I want to say that I always thought that I could, like, I always, I always had that belief that the work that I put in, like it, it should equate to, to playing at the highest level. Like I always thought that, but um, I definitely was happy to see my first three go in last year because I went like 10 games where I was shooting like one a game and I, I didn't make one till the Kent state game. I think the Kent state game at home. And then right after that was the Miami game when I didn't miss a field goal. So those, those two games right there were definitely big for me as far as confidence goes. Now, do you remember that play that you made that, that three? Um, no, I don't. It, I don't at Kent State. No, I, it was, it was probably a pick and pop or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, Hey, a great way to enter into college, right? I mean, I mean, and at least hitting your first collegiate three, right? I mean, a cool one and especially at home, but as always, my friend, appreciate you joining the program. Thanks for coming on today. Would love to get you back on down the road. Good luck this year. Stay healthy and stay well. And we'll chat soon. Yeah. Appreciate it. You too.